What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we are talking underspins, fall bass fishing, and why you need to be throwing an underspin right now. All right guys, I'm really trying hard to simplify uh, my fall swim bait underspin game uh, for you guys, trying to really narrow it down. But the, to be completely honest, you walk into any tackle shop around the country or you shop online, I mean, how many different types and styles and sizes of, of, of swim baits are there, right? So many different styles, so many different sizes. I mean, just in Kitex, you have 4.8s, you got 4.3s, you got 3.8s, you got 3.3s, uh, 2.8s, 5.8s, all sorts of different sizes. And then you start trying to pair them up with, with the right size head and hook, it can be overwhelming. So I'm gonna try and simplify it for you, give you my favorite hooks, my favorite baits, and, uh, and then you can take that and build off of it, you know, and adjust this information for your fishery. You know, if you're fishing a fishery that has threadfin shad, silver sides, gizzard shad, bluegill panfish, you know, whatever the primary bait fish is, but fall time, these fish are getting active, they're feeding up, and it's time to add some flash to your swim bait. So, two different scenarios. Exposed hook, open water, and that sun just peeked out of the clouds. It is getting bright and shadowy, and exposed, weedless, okay? Open water, exposed hook, weedless, brush piles, grass, shallow grass, up super shallow where those fish are pinning or corralling the bait. So, I got probably I don't know, three or four different styles of hooks, and then I probably have four or five different types of swim baits, uh, because believe it or not, all these swim baits, for the most part, have a completely different kick, or body roll, or side to side kick, it's completely different. And this time of the year, you know, we're coming into those cooler water temps, cooler nights, water temps are dropping, fish are getting active, I want stuff or a swim bait that mimics stuff that is fleeing, so like a real tight kick. Um, if I'm slow rolling, I might go with something with that, like that X-Zone, that swammer that has a ton of, of side to side wobble and roll. It's a really good summer bait all the way through into fall. Uh, and then as we get into those colder months, I might go with a Largo Shad that has a really tight kick or uh, an easy shiner. So that's what we're gonna cover today. And then I'll link all my favorite uh, colors and baits and all that good stuff down below in the video description. But fall time, bait fish, right? The shad are schooling up. Big old shad balls and the fish are gonna be transitioning from where they spent summer to where they're going to spend winter. In between we have that fall transition. A lot of times they're offshore. They could be shallow, they could be deep, but they're, it's all about the bait fish. I don't care if you're in two feet of water on a quarter mile grass, fat, grass flat, you could fish three quarters of that map, but once you start finding or you hear, you hear like the pop in the bluegill, or you see some flickering of some bait fish. When you get around the bait fish or the pan fish, that's when you're gonna start catching bass, and that's when you need to go with a weedless underspin, okay? Uh, and then obviously offshore main lake points, offshore rock piles, maybe secondary points or humps, you know, high spots out there on the main channel. Uh, you know, those, those fish are gonna be down there, when those bait balls come around, they're gonna be schooling them up and they might follow that bait ball for a half a mile or they might stay put and as that bait comes over, that's when they draw them up to the surface and blow up on them or, or stay you know, in that general area and feed on, on those bait balls. So two completely different styles, exposed hook, weedless, let's run through them and then you guys can decide what is best for you. Okay. 
let's talk size of bait fish because that is really my number one thing that I try and key in on. You know, when I launch at the boat ramp, I'm looking, you know, are there baby bluegill? Are there full size bluegill? Are there baby shad, full size shad, three inch shad? you know, five and a half inch shad, gizzard shad. I'm trying to get as much information on the primary forage as possible so I can match the hatch. And that is what is really important. Uh, the whole purpose of throwing an underspin is making your bait stand out from the hundreds or thousands of real light bait fish that are swimming around that these fish are feeding on, right? You add a little bit of flash, a little bit of vibration, play around with that tail kick on your swim bait and that bait's just gonna look a little bit different and uh, maybe swim a little bit slower, a little bit deeper, but it's gonna allow those fish to really hone in on your bait and eat your bait opposed to the hundreds or thousands of real bait swimming around in that school. So pay attention to size of bait. You know, probably the biggest that I'm gonna throw on a regular basis is gonna be this guy right here. This is a Kitek Swing Impact Fat 4.8, okay? I have a couple of them rigged. If you are a shallow guy, you're up there chasing, maybe you were on an awesome top water bite, a grass bite, uh, you know, less than let's say 10 feet of water. I am going with this guy right here. I'm going with, uh, Weedless rigged. This is an owner flashy swimmer. Wanted to show you guys this right here. What's cool is that is actually a Colorado blade. They are also available in a willow blade. See that two different blade styles, shapes, two different thumps. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit slower, more, more thump. And then the willow blade is gonna be a little bit tighter. That's gonna be more of your Threadfin Shad imitating, uh, Alewife, Silver Sides, whereas that big thumper, that's gonna be more like your panfish, bluegill, uh, sunfish, that sort of stuff. But the cool thing about these has a screw lock on the head. And those of you guys that aren't familiar with, I can link all this stuff down below in the, in the video description. But you thread that bait on to that owner centering pin. They come pre-rigged on the hook, right? I don't know how bad that glare is. Looks, feels like I'm staring right into the sun. You want, when rigging that, you want that thing as straight as possible. Then you come through the belly and just come right out the back straight, lay that hook flat in that little hook pocket, and boom, you have a weedless swim bait that you can throw through the grass over the grass, through the brush pile, whatever it may be, but you are weedless. And that is what makes these things uh, so, so effective. Again, play around with the different blades. Again, different feel, different thump, vibration, sound. You know, you might be on a heavily pressured fishery and everybody's throwing that willow, try throwing the Colorado. But that is a 4.8, rigged weedless okay here is a 4.8 rigged that's the that's that blade runner this guy right here get you out of the sun blade runner again has that screw lock on the shank of the hook so the the purpose of the screw lock is it really holds that bait on there and you don't go through a ton of baits you know, there's a lot of bad hook keeper or bait keeper systems on hooks. Uh, I think that, that that screw lock or having that corkscrew on there is probably the best as far as um, versatility with different baits and then just keeping your bait from ripping after every fish. But again, if I'm fishing open water, again, these fish are gonna be on bottom looking up or they're gonna be up with the bait ball swimming around. So I like that Blade Runner, comes in some heavier sizes, so I can get down in that 18 to 25, 30 foot range and really chase 
you know, those fish that are chasing around um, those deeper offshore bait balls, spot spotted bass are notorious for being down in that 18 to 30 foot range chasing chasing bait balls. So that's where I like to go with that larger head with the exposed hook. You know, the benefit of throwing the exposed hook, if you're not fishing on the bottom or through grass, when that fish comes up and eats it, sometimes they eat it coming to you and then they turn and then they hook themselves, right? You just feel that pressure and then you load up and they're already there. A lot of times you don't feel them uh, just smash it because they eat it coming at you or or coming at you a little bit and they turn, they hook themselves. Another great underspin for like your 4.3 size or 4.8 size is going to be, I grabbed all sorts of heads for you guys. This is a 3 8 ounce, that's the Gamakatsu underspin. Again, you'll see that screw lock in there, the shade, see that? So that is a 4.3 versus a 4.8 again you are matching the hatch anything below that size so 3.8 3.3 or 2.8 that's where we go with our tactical mini underspin we designed this bait last couple years came to market this last year and that is our finesse underspin head we designed that head to have to bring any extras we designed that head to well here it is this is a 3 8 ounce on a 3.5 largo shad that is an awesome thumping bait but let me pull this off real quick we designed this hook keeper see how that hook keepers on the bottom the problem with a lot of your finesse sized underspins, the hook keepers on the top. So when those fish come over, their lips grab that bait right there. You set the hook or you're fighting. They pull that bait on top of that hook keeper and they rip the top of your bait all up. So after one or two fish, your bait is shot. But we move that hook keeper to the bottom so you still rig it the same way. You just push the bottom of that bait up on that shank and it locks it into place and you get a lot more a lot more um fish catches out of a single bait but uh, we came out with four different sizes of heads on that like i said that's the three eights little itty bitty guy on the spark shad the other thing that we really took into consideration was the uh length of the drop wire to clear a lot of your See that? A lot of your um, different size bellied swim baits on some of our other favorite underspins, the blade wouldn't clear the belly so it wouldn't rotate. But uh, spent a lot of time designing that guy. That's that Largo Shad. That thing is money. We're going to get to that in just a second. But again, if we're fishing open water and we're fishing anything from 3 8, a 3.8 size swim bait or smaller, we're going with that tactical mini underspin. That's been lights out. A little bit stouter hook. You don't have to worry about bending out. Um, so baits. So we kind of talked about, no, I'm jumping around a little bit, but uh, we kind of talked about the two different scenarios, right? You're fishing through grass or you're fishing open water. I like to be able to fish the exposed hook as much as possible. A lot of times up shallow, it's not possible. Really cool product I saw this year. The BKK Titan. That's a swim bait hook. That's a one aught swim bait hook. Check out this guy. Same same screw on feature. Got a nice gap so you can put your bigger belly shad profile swim baits on this guy. Make sure I rig it straight for you. But they come in super small sizes and weights. That's a that's a sixteenth ounce, I believe. Yeah, one sixteenth ounce and a one aught has a little rubber keeper. You can slide up on on the belly of the bait on that hook shank to keep your bait swimming straight. But now 
we have the ability to fish those smaller swim baits in that grass, you know, that vegetation situation. So that's another uh, killer little presentation. I was out last night, the fish were just destroying shad in grass patches. You know, I was catching them on a fluke, catch them on this guy, catch them on a frog. But having that weedless uh, presentation opposed to that exposed hook really allows you to take advantage and catch those fish in the grass. So I want to show you guys that hook because that thing is really cool. Uh, now that we kind of talked about the different hooks, we talked about the flashy swimmer and our underspin and the blade runner and the gami. Swim baits. I'm gonna say 75% of the time I'm throwing some kind of Kitek swing impact fat. Either a 2.8 Where'd that little guy go? Did I tie that one on? Yep. A 2.8. That's rigged on a little guppy. Little side note, if you guys love to throw a 2.8 sized swim bait or a uh, underspin, I'm challenging you to get at least one BFS rod. Now you don't have to, you no longer have to throw these little swim baits on a spinning rod. You could take your favorite finesse swim bait or underspin, pair it up with a BFS rod and a BFS reel, and throw that thing 30 to 40 yards. I mean, that's an eight ounce head. And then you have that same muscle memory as throwing your favorite, you know, six to eight inch swim bait. So throwing an underspin, on a BFS system is awesome. Throwing a little a finesse swim bait on a BFS system is awesome. Uh, it's just totally changed the game for me. So again, that's that little eighth ounce tack. That's that mini, mini underspin we designed with that uh, 2.8. But I, like I said, 75% of the time I'm throwing that some kind of uh, swing impact fat, okay? Now when I want a different, I'm still too bright. When I want a different action, I want more of a, a tight kick, that's when I'm switching up and I'm going with an easy shiner. This is a four inch easy shiner. I don't think I have one rigged up. This is a four inch easy shiner and here's the three inch easy shiner. Kitek, if you're watching this video, we need a 3.5 because the size difference between the two is crazy. You know, you look at a 3.3 Kitek compared to a 3.8, fairly similar but look at this four inch versus the three inch i mean it is night and day difference but this works really really well uh, on our little tactical mini underspin but the benefit of having that narrower body that narrow tail section you get a, you get a real frantic style kick and that's the key this time of the year again a lot of times you'll look down and you'll see a single shad that's been broken off from the group and it's just swimming i mean it's like Nemo, right? Just swimming for his life, trying to find another school and not get eaten. But having that little quick, frantic tail kick and, and moving that bait quickly is what's key this time of the year. So that guy, I will switch up to that guy right there. And then um, last but not least for that style of kick, gonna be the three or the three and a half inch Largo Shad. Has a little bit different profile See that belly right there drops down. Again, that hook or that blade clears it with that longer wire. But that is a money bait for frantic, frantically fleeing underspin. That guy right there. Again, we're adding flash, we're adding vibration. We're getting, we're moving that bait fairly quickly. You can go with a little bit heavier head. Let that bait, you know, stay upright. Doesn't roll over, and uh, get that tail frantically kicking. One other bait that I want to, actually two other baits for you. This guy right here, the X-Zone Swammer. We've talked to you guys about this guy now for the last year and a half or so. This has a real wide kick, a real methodical kick, a lot of, a lot of belly roll. So if I'm just chucking and winding, maybe I'm not fishing it at mid column, I'm down closer to bottom and I'm just, just creeping that thing. That thing just has a real methodical kick and that's produced a lot of bites all summer for me and uh, worked really works really worked really well last fall transition 
and I've been throwing it a lot this year as well. And then last but not least, you guys that are th chasing smallmouth or spotted bass in that clear water and you want a little bit different kick than the Kitek, the 2.8, this guy right here, the Mega Bass Spark Shad. Okay, large mouth eat it, spot smallies eat it. That's just a different style kick than the Largo Shad, than the X-Zone, than the 2.8. It's a little bit different profile. But between those two or three baits, you can really change completely how that bait is acting and looking in the water. And it is really, really important. Guys, as the sun is setting, I can't emphasize uh, the, the blade, the vibration, the flash, uh, as much, I mean, I can't emphasize it enough, especially going through this fall transition into fall, these fish are gonna be feeding up, chasing those bait balls, and having that little bit of flash, a little bit of vibration, will get that bass to key in on your bait, opposed, from the, opposed to those hundreds or thousands of real life shad, and it can be the difference maker. I've had days where I've been throwing just a normal swim bait, and I can't get bit. As soon as I take that swim bait off, same color, everything, I rig it on a flashy swimmer, or I rig it on some kind of underspin, lights out. Guys, it is a miracle worker this time of the year. And like I said, having the ability now to throw the little guys weedless, that is awesome as well. Guys, if you have any questions on underspins or you, if you don't have enough confidence, hopefully this gives you enough confidence to at least go out and try throwing an underspin. It is by far my favorite way to throw a swim bait this time of the year adding that flash, adding that vibration. Hopefully this gets you guys set in the right direction and gives you guys confidence to build and catch fish all the way into that winter transition. Uh, throwing that exposed hook will work all the way through into spring, so don't worry about that. As that grass dies off, you guys might have to switch from a weedless underspin to an open or exposed hook, but that's no biggie. So. Guys, if you have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. I'll try to get those as soon as possible. But as always, guys, we appreciate the support. Thank you for watching. If you learned something from this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys on the next video.